Okay. What's going on, everybody? My name is Mang. Welcome back to Mang Plays the Best Games of All Time. With Star Control 2, the Urquan Masters. Raise your hand if you've ever heard of this game. This one I'm really interested in because... Uh, a bunch of the games on this list that I have not heard of have turned out to be really interesting. So, yeah, this one, I, I, yeah, I'd never heard of it. I, I really, and I haven't looked into it, I haven't watched videos, I haven't really read about it. I don't know what to expect with this one. Um, This was developed by Toys for Bob, which is a company. They apparently made the Skylander series. made Star Control, that was their first game, then Star Control 2. Just looking down the list of other things, I mean, then they really just fucking sold out. 102 Dalmatians, Disney's Extreme Skate Adventure, Madagascar, Skylanders, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, they apparently did something. The Spyro Reignited Trilogy, yeah, I guess they were responsible for both of those remasters. They worked on Warzone, I guess. I guess who hasn't, I suppose. Uh, they're owned by Activision now, of course. But before that, yeah, they made Star Control 1 and 2. And it's... This is a... Adventure game? It's an action-adventure science fiction game set in an open universe. Features ship to ship combat. And it's like. dialogue, and. I don't. I don't know what to think. I, let's just play it. Um. I sort of talked over that whole intro there. Let's see here. Uh, so it's a, obviously it's a sequel. In the last phase of the war between the Alliance of Free Stars and the Hierarchy of Battle Thralls, an Earthling ship discovered an ancient precursor subterranean installation in the Vila star system. A massive hierarchy offensive forced the Alliance fleets to retreat beyond Vela, stranding the science expedition who went into hiding. Decades later, with the help of a genius child born on the planet, the colonists activated the precursor machinery and found out that it was programmed to build a highly advanced but unfinished starship, which could be piloted only by the now-grown genius child, who alone could interact with the precursor's central computer. The new ship set out to Seoul to make contact with Earth, but shortly before reaching Seoul, the little fleet was attacked by an unknown probe. The expedition commander, captaining the expedition's Earthling cruiser, intercepted the alien ship before it could damage the defenseless precursor starship, but was killed in the short fight, leaving the genius young man in command. The player begins the game as the commander of the precursor starship, who returns to Earth to find it enslaved by the Urquan. Okay, I don't know if that's happened yet. So we're a genius? We're like the genius star child? The chosen one or something? I don't know. Alright, name the red dwarf. I don't know. Um, dwarfy? <laughs> okay, start new game. Okay, enter a name. Captain Bang. And what's... Oh, my flagship. Um, the Amaryllis. Okay. Done. Uh, 
reading moderate? Oh, reading speed? Okay, I guess. Combat? Resolve? Cyborg is off? Uh... Okay... I can save the game? Sure... I can quit... The, okay... Manifest? Cargo? Oh, my cargo manifest. Well, they sure abbreviated everything. I don't have any cargo. That does nothing. Uh, crew. Okay, I probably don't want to do that. Uh, star map? Oh, God. It's like elite all over again. Okay, and I can spend fuel to move to different planets. No. Okay, I went to Seoul. We want to go to Earth, right? Oh, oh god, I'm actually flying into the sun. Oh, fuck. Okay, I stopped. Which one's Earth again? Uh, what are we? Third? This is second. This is... Fuck, flight is difficult. Ease up, man. There we go. No, that's not where I wanted to go. Alright, hold on. We'll get the hang of it. That's Mercury. I don't want no Mercury. No, no! We'll get the hang of this. Come on, come on! I was so close. Just lock on. There we go. Earth. Oh god, attention interloper, heed this recorded message. This drone vessel speaks of the voice and authority of the Urquan. You are trespassing within Urquan space. This world Earth may not be approached for any reason. Nor will hostilities against our orbital platform be tolerated. In addition, your ship does not respond to standard hierarchy identification transmissions. Therefore, deemed to be independent. This is not permissible. Only subservient shall be tolerated. This drone now leaves to inform the Urquan of your transgressions. You are commanded to remain here and await the arrival of the Urquan. Disobedience will be punished. Alright, well, let's maybe just go to Earth or. Moon? Should we go to the moon? Scan. Luna. It's a vacuum. Mineral energy biological. Biological scan. Okay, there's... There's people on the moon. Dispatch. What is this? Is this a friendly thing? Can I fire at it? It's not doing shit. I think it's just a rover. Oh, I got calcium. This is like Mass Effect. Oh, report from surface. We have discovered an alien base and have explored its interior. The installation must have been abandoned many years ago, but great care has been taken to make it appear active. Life support systems are functioning. Fusion generators are at full output, and robotic construction vehicles 
have been programmed to roam the lunar surface, bulldozing moon dust into random piles. In addition, we have found the installation's hyperwave locked in transit mode, endlessly playing the same alien recording. Although we can cannot translate the message, our Xenotech, Ensign Rigby, believes the message is some kind of alert or mayday broadcast. The base is filled with useful materials and equipment. We will scavenge as much as we can and bring it aboard immediately. End of report. Well, that's awesome. Alright, so... I think I picked up 12 calcium. I'm not sure what else I got. Oh, I got moon base debris. That's the sound effect you went with? Alright, anyways. Okay, um, let's go back to... Navigate? Yep. Let's go to this space space. Attention, unidentified space vessel. It's like a rave. I'm Starbase Commander Hayes of the slave planet Earth. Our hyperwave broadcast, extremely weak. Situation critical, energy core is exhausted. Scanners and deep radar are non-functional. Cannot identify your vessel. Are you the scheduled hierarchy resupply ship? Repeat, are you the resupply vessel? Oh, shit. Um... No, this is the Starship Amaryllis, but we stand ready to assist you. Starship what? Never mind, look, we won't last much longer. Here's our situation. According to our oath of fealty to the Urquan, we must maintain this star base. But we have no space vessels of our own. And the shield prevents us from contacting Earth. So we are totally dependent on the Urquan supply vessels for everything we need up here. We know there is a hierarchy base on the surface of the moon, but we cannot contact them. The Urquan were supposed to resupply this base at regular five-year intervals. But we haven't received anything in almost eight years. What we don't recycle, we can usually synthesize. But to do so, we need replacement radioactives for our generator's energy cores. If you could bring us some radioactive elements, we can fabricate the cores ourselves. Are you willing to help us? It's like a rave! It's funny. Where can we find the radioactive elements you need? The fastest way to get radioactives in this system would be to land on Mercury and scour the surface for deposits of radioactive elements. But be careful, Mercury is a pretty inhospitable place. Watch out for earthquakes and hot spots. We will leave now to find the elements you require. Thanks, I'll make sure to mention this the next time I talk with our masters. I'm sure they will reward you. Do we want to play nice with the fucking Urquan? All right, so we're bouncing. So I can't just... No, we have to physically weave. All right. Well, let's make our way to Mercury, then. Which is the little red one. Fucking hell, missed it. Got it. Alright, navigation is a little bit of a bitch. But we can do it. Straight into Mercury, baby. Scan it for minerals. And if I scan it for energy, okay, that resets it. 
We want radioactive, so... Okay, well, no, it saved everything. Alright, biolog biological. Nothing's living on Mercury. Alright. Let's dispatch here. Shablam. Oh, God. It's hot. You got uranium, though. Nickel. Oh, God. I'm gonna die. Let's get out of there. I lost crew. I lost, I lost nine people on that shit. Damn. Was that worth it? I don't know how much radioactive material I need. I'm not sure. Um... If I send it back down, am I going to still be at, like, three health? I don't know, let's plop it down here near this cluster. Okay, no, I'm at full health. So as long as you bounce before uh, you explode, the worst thing that happens is you lose... Oh, I'm full? Oh no, that was so quick! I lost a lot of crew. And I doubt I actually got any of that. Fuck. Mercury can suck my ass. Alright, let's just make it back. And if he's not happy with what I give him, then fuck him. Uh, yeah, I don't know if there's like really a faster way to go. I could look at the manual. I mean, here it's fucking fast. Too fast. Too furious. Good. Close it. Finding radioactive elements for our power cores. We are ready to transfer radioactives. Initiating transfer of radioactives. Now, as soon as our engineers can refit the energy cores. There. That's much better. Power ratings are climbing. Life support is coming back into the green. Deep radar systems and sensors are now online. I can scan your vessel. What the hell kind of ship is that? Just who are you, Captain? I'm Captain Mang of the Starship Amaryllis. We are survivors of a Star Control Science research team to the Vela Star System. Star Control Science mission, eh? Captain, I served as a Star Control officer during the war, aboard several cruisers on the Coreward, Coreward Front. And if there had been any scientific mission to Vela, I would have heard about it. The mission was highly secret. You know, come to think of it, there were some rumors that Corridor 9, the Special Operations Division of Star Control, was directing some hush hush operation out near an Androsynth space. The Vela Star System. Yes, that would be in the right direction. So, Captain, if what you say is true, how do you explain that huge alien starship you're flying? And why you are here? What do you want from us? We've returned to Earth to give you the technological secrets of the Precursors and to help you fight the Hierarchy. Ah, uh, fight the Urquan! Win back our freedom! I remember having such thoughts myself, once, a long time ago. Well, that was in the first years after the defeat, and it was still terrifying to look up. And see the bloody glow of the pulsating slave shield overhead. Through day and night, we gazed up at that impenetrable wall. As though the sheer power of our hatred would pull it down. But over the years, I spent so much of my time struggling. 
down on the surface, under the shield, and then later up here, trying to keep this station alive. I had forgotten what it means to be free, to hate our Urquan masters. And now here you are, in an alien ship of unknown power, offering me your assistance to fight against the hierarchy again after all these years. Captain, your offer is intriguing. It's tempting to think that with your advanced precursor technology, we can somehow crack Earth's slave shield. Reassemble the Alliance to attack the Hierarchy, and this time, win the damn war. But consider the consequences if we should fail. The Urquan won't just punish us here at this station. They will exact a gruesome retribution on the surface below as well. Before I commit this station to helping you attack the Urquan, and accepting the risk of annihilation if we are defeated, I have to be sure that you and your ship have what it takes to oppose the hierarchy. I'll make you a deal. If you can eliminate the alien base on the moon and get rid of, get rid of that threat at least, I will seriously consider your offer. I already did that, bitch! We uh, attacked the moon base and completely destroyed the enemy. You fought them, Captain? I hope you didn't suffer serious casualties. Yes, it was a very vicious fight. I'm delighted to hear it, Captain. I wish I could have been there. Captain, listen closely. Long-range sensors show a ship closing on this station fast. Our computer identifies it as Illrath, Avenger class. I think you've got a fight on your hands, Captain. Your best bet is to wait until it's at point-blank range. Captain, it's jamming our... Signal! Shit, I gotta fight. By the fated breath of the dark twin Kazon, a human in an alien starship. How fascinating. When I intercepted that Urquan drone and learned that an unidentified starship had approached Earth, I never expected to find such a remarkable vehicle in the hands of a human. Humans are prey animals, weak and helpless. But here is a human in an armed starship, and therefore a direct violation of the Oath of Fealty. I am sure our masters, the Urquan, will punish Earth most severely for this treachery. When I present them with the twisted wreckage of your ship and your many charred corpses. It'll be a pleasure blasting your ugly face out of the stars. I have no fear of you, feeble mammal. Though my ship lacks a functional cloaking device and many of our crew are dead. My gods, Dogar the Black and Kazan the Unseen have personally confided to me that they despise you humans and that they will help us to kill you all. Oh shit. Uh, okay. Yes. Oh god. Oh my god. Fuck. Are you shitting me? I gotta start over? All the way o Oh man. Yep, all the fucking way over. Damn it. Um, well that sucks. Uh, fucking save all the time. Forever. Just, just do it. Just please save. That sucked. Mercury has a lot of moons. Or is this not Mercury? This is Jupiter. Don't land on Jupiter. <sighs> Alright. Well, let's go back uh, to Mercury. Oh yeah, I'm far. Uh, yeah, Mercury. Okay, yes. God, I wish I had better controls. There it is. I mean, 
And I don't think I can use my controller. Now, they put this on the 3DO. Maybe I should have just gotten that version. Alright, dispatch. Right there. Okay, I probably should just bounce. I don't think I really need much more than that. Let's just go over here. I mean, I'm not entirely clear on the value of all these different resources. Um, I think, I think that's always just, that's it for radioactive stuff. And that's all we really need, so I don't know why I'm fucking around more, I'm gonna lose crew. All right, we're good. Oh, I am using fuel when I do that. Okay, that's the price you pay. Don't want to use too much fuel. All right, so we're heading back here. And we get hit with this thing. Skip through, very nice, very nice. Good. Head over to the moon real quick. Uh, scan, although I don't think it really matters. Maybe an energy. Yeah, okay, energy. There it is. Yeah, let's just land there. There it is. Boom! Right on top of it. Alright, good, 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 good. Done. Right, now I'm gonna save again. Because theoretically we should be able to go right into that fight. I don't know if it would really be better with a controller at all. Okay. Yeah. And then he gives his big speech about being ready to, to fight back. Uh, let's say it was abandoned years ago this time. I'll be darned. All these years we've been listening to their incoherent broadcasts and we never even guessed. Captain, listen closely. Okay, I don't think it really matters which one you say. Now, do we want to try to negotiate with this thing? Probably not. It looks very clearly to be just a big enemy. But let's say that we can coexist peacefully. Must be either a naive child or a hopeless fool. Yeah, alright. Turn around, dude! Back up! That's insane! I didn't even know... How did he get the ambush on me? Okay, I definitely survived longer, though, because I had more crew. So that's kind of interesting. Alright, we're just going to have to go through the dialogue again, because there's no save before that fight happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All 
Alright, so we just gotta turn on them and just blast them. I don't think we can outmaneuver them or anything like that. We just have to survive and destroy them. So fucked. Alright, we got him, but holy shit, did we lose a lot. What a beautiful sight, Captain. I haven't seen an Avenger blown away like that since the battle in Draco. I guess you've shown that you can handle yourself in a battle, Captain. So my last reservation about helping you has been dissolved. I'll commit this station to helping you free Earth and defeat the Urquan. We may get our atoms rearranged in the process, but by God, Captain, we're going to try. So, the obvious first step is to get your precursor equipment and software over here. Where we can make it work with our ship repair fabricators. Then what, Captain? We will slowly build our strength, unify an allied Starfleet, and bring the Urquan to their knee equivalents. Sensible plan, Captain. Let's get to work. By the way, Captain, I think we need a new name for this... We need a name for this new alliance we're going to forge. Since this was your idea, it's only fair that you have the honor of naming it. So what will it be? The Empire of Mang. Uh, the United Federation of Worlds. That is a familiar ring to it. Nonetheless, we will make it so. The United Federation of Worlds. Now, Captain, I expect the configuration process for this starbase to take at least two weeks, so let's get to work. I have good news to report, Captain. We've successfully integrated the precursor technology from your ship into our fabricator system. And as you can see, we've already begun minor repairs on the Amaryllis, patching up some micrometeorite holes. You notice that your ship does not have an emergency warp escape unit. So our engineers rig some up for you in each of your escorts. Now you should be able to escape from a bad situation. With the touch of a butt. There is a cost, however. The unit gulps five fuel units each time your precursor ship uses it. Also, we now have a limited capacity to make modifications to your ship. To refine starship fuel, to build additional combat ships. And to train new crew members for the Amaryllis and any ships you acquire for your fleet. Captain, I know you're eager to get to work, so I'll be brief. If you have any questions, how this starbase works, what resources we need, or just some background information on the galaxy, don't hesitate to ask. Commander, I have minerals to offload. The Amaryllis' cargo manifest lists 68 kilotons of base metals for 204 res units, 18 kilotons of precious elements for 108 res units. 32 kilotons of radioactives for 256 res units. The more minerals you bring us, Captain Mang, the faster you'll be able to tackle the Urquan. Alright. Goodbye, Commander. I have 3,000 RU res units at 3,000 bucks. Outfit Starship. Okay, so I can buy fuel, that's 20 bucks a pop, alright, we probably want like 15 for now. Turning rate, I mean that, oh god, we gotta crank that. Module, planet lander, 500, fusion thrust, turning jets, crew pod, storage bay, fuel tank, dynamo unit, ion bolt gun. All right, well, we want turning jets for sure. All right, I installed them. Uh, uh, I don't know what my max crew is. But 
my turning rate's now seven. Uh, max fuel of 60. Dynamo unit? Uh, okay, we probably don't want any of the really expensive stuff. Alright, I've got a second planet lander. Uh, let's add a fusion thrust. Go a little faster. Maybe I want a storage bay. Sure. I mean, I don't think there's really many, like... I don't know. I don't know if there's options here or if you're just, like, slowly completing it. I think we're okay here, though. Maybe there are options. Yeah. Could be. Alright, let's bump up to 20 fuel. Uh, let me just save again. Shipyard. Okay, here I can get crew. Or I can add ships. Yeah, I don't know what this little extra ship I have is. That's not my planet lander, that's just like an extra ship. Alright, well, I just sold it. That probably wasn't good. Oh, Earth Cruiser. I got a bunch of money for it, I guess. But I probably shouldn't have sold it. Well, let's buy crew. There we go. Hold it down. Oh, yeah, hold it down. Get us back up to 50. So each crew bay can hold 50. I should probably go buy another one. That's 2,000 a pop. Alright. So maybe in that battle I should have used the smaller ship for maneuverability, but it probably just would have gotten wrecked, so I don't know. Alright, depart Starbase. And now we're just out in the world. So I guess I just can go f farm minerals and stuff and materials. Keep upgrading my ship. Save again, just to be sure. Uh, let's try and land on Earth. And there's a map of Earth. But it's got the shield, so I can't do anything with it. Yeah, that makes sense. Alright. I guess that's why the turning speed is so shit, because you're completely unupgraded. Makes sense. Alright, let's check out um, Venus. That's a hospitable planet, right? Biological. Nothing. Energy. Nothing. Mineral. Alright, sure. Let's go check it out. Oh god. Oh god, it's not... We got some ammonia, but that place is not pleasant, man. Just land right on it. Maybe that'll help. I didn't land anywhere near it! Oh, I got it! Alright, how much ammonia do we really want to get? get the fuck out of here. Alright, there's other planets in the solar system. Um, No, nothing with Mercury. What's the fourth planet? Mars. Let's check out Mars. Down to 34 crew. I lost that much crew. Oh my god. Yeah, we need the crew bay. Soon. Biological. Nothing on Mars. Energy. Nothing on Mars. Minerals. And this one should be fairly okay for our lander. Can't imagine there's that much bad shit. 
bismuth, bismuth, potassium, aluminum. I don't know why they have like a slurping sound effect. That's really quite lame. But Mars is good. Gotta love Mars. Nice and peaceful. It's so funny that they have just this tiny corner of the screen devoted to the actual, like, surface. And then most of the screen is just a static image of the planet. But sure. Sure. Alright. Let's, uh, let's head back to Starbase. Maybe they, uh... That's probably enough. I'm hoping that ammonia that I got off Venus is worth a decent amount. talk to the commander. Hello, Captain May. Minerals to offload. Minerals is cargo manifest. Lists. 40 kilotons of common elements for 40 res units. 56 kilotons of base metals for 168 res units. Light load this time, Captain May. Yeah, I guess so. Fuck. Mercury is the hot spot, I guess. Alright, um... Then let's go back to Mercury real quick. I'm not r really sure how much I want to... I guess we probably want to check every planet in the solar system here before venturing out to systems unknown. Fuck! All right, Mercury, be kind. Uh, scan for minerals. Plenty, plenty of good stuff. No energy, no biological. All right, just land here. The radioactive stuff, that was the big money maker. Sulfur. Silver. Nickel. I'm ready to bounce out at a moment's notice. Fingers on the trigger. Oh, I'm full up on that. Oh, I think... Yeah, I mean, it would make sense. The actual lander can't carry that much. V vanadium. Iron and sulfur. Some more iron. Vanadium, yeah. Mercury is the way to go. So now... If I exit, I navigate... Let's say I go forward, and then I just, like, turn around. Is this going to reset? Yeah. Uh, no, actually. I guess time actually has to pass. Interesting. Alright, well, let's peace out and go sell this. And then we'll go check out Jupiter. Jupiter's packed, you know. Plenty of moons. I have minerals to offload. Okay, corrosives, 42 res units. Okay, good money for base metals, precious elements, 66 res units, another small load, Captain Mang. Suppose something is better than nothing. Oh boy, 
Don't criticize my small loads. I've got enough for a new crew bay, but I don't know if I have enough to actually stock it. Shipyard. Crew. Okay, it's three. No, it's one for three bucks. Alright, well, let's just invest in crew. Seems like a smart decision. There you go, 98 crew on board my ship. Alright, let's head for Jupiter. I mean, it's a big-ass fucking game, if you look at the star map. I mean, you wonder, I guess, how much is really out there, but I, I mean, there's got to be minerals and everything. Oh, shit, I was right there. There it is, Jupiter. Alright, let's just head for the big bitch herself. See what that holds. Biological. Nothing. Energy. Nothing. Mineral. Nothing, because it's all gas, of course. No point in landing on Jupiter, but I thought I'd check. You never know. Alright, what about one of its moons here? I think I can name a single Jupiter moon. Uh, doesn't even say... Oh, Europa. Yeah, 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 okay. Biological, nothing. Energy, nothing. Mineral, goodies. That looks radioactive. Let's dispatch. Hope I don't lose too many. Astatine. Astatine. Bromine. Bromine's, like, precious, right? I don't know. I don't know anything. Nice and friendly here on Europa, though, so that's nice. A little bit more roaming. Might as well just slurp it all up since we're here. More astatine. Alright, done. Let's save again. Fuck you, you know your shit. You know you are shit. Got it. What be this one? Io. It's very, very cold on Io. It's got class four tectonics, but there's no weather. Biological, nothing. Energy, nothing. Mineral, yes. Should be okay. No bad weather. Francium. Francium. Thorium. Francium. Actinium. Astatine. Okay. Okay, there's a little bit of trouble there with, like, earthquakes, but not terrible. Francium. I actually did lose some crew members. They're, they're, they, they die very easily, you know. Fuck. Okay, peace out. Alright, we're down to 90, but it's fine. Alright, well, uh, we're just gonna fill up our stockpile, I guess, in our storage. Ganymede. No biological. No energy. Plenty of good minerals, though. Let's hit it up. No weather, class 1 tectonics. I assume that means it's okay. Cyanoacetylene. Okay, 
that sounds good. Simple, simple stuff. Nothing too difficult there. And the last moon of Jupiter. Uh, yes. Last moon. You fuck. You know what I'm going for. Why are you doing that to me? Alright. Callisto. Nothing. A barren planet? Not even minerals? Wow. Alright, fuck Callisto, I guess. Save again. Alright, let's head back. We should have a decent amount of money now. I don't want to hear him saying another shit about having a light load. That's all I'm saying. Nice. Get the hang of flight a little bit, I guess. Alright, talk to me, man. Watch you know, our deep space monitoring team has detected faint alien signals coming from Uranus. <laughs> Somewhere in that general direction. Uh, the emanations are definitely being generated from within the solar system. And could represent the presence of a hierarchy spy. Alright. What do we got? 98 kilotons of common elements for 98 res units. 42 kilotons of Krosis for 84 res units. 168 kilotons of Radioactives for 1,344 res units! Not a bad job. Alright. We're not flush with cash or anything, but... We can go here, we can fill up on our crew... ...to 100. Um... We could probably... Well, let's get some more fuel if we're going to Uranus. Let's grab another fusion thrust and turning jets. If we're going to be actually shooting down a spy. I think I'm happy with that. Let's save another time and head to Uranus. Now, you just asked me to pick... Like, if I had to guess what numbered planet Uranus is, it's got to be out there, right? It's not a close one. We're not close to Uranus. Uh, I don't know, maybe that blue one? I mean, Pluto's going to be here, right? But Pluto's the last one on the line. Oh, this blue one might be Neptune. I never know. I, I'm not in... I, I don't know. It was Neptune, wow. Well, since we're here. Triton. It's got minerals. No energy. No biological. No, I'm not going to waste my time. Does anyone remember that movie Rocket Man from the 90s with Harlan Williams? I always liked that movie as a kid. I, I, I doubt it holds up too well to an adult Mang's viewing, but it's very enjoyable as a kid. It has William Sadler in it as like the, the angry straight man. That's Pluto, the little purple one. We're going with Uranus is here. This is Saturn. Uh, where are its rings, bro? 
I can have Saturn without some rings, bro. All right, I have to assume that most planets out there are devoid of all life and activity. That seems to be the case even within our sole solar system. I gotta say, it's pretty uncreative of us humans to call our solar system soul. Uranus. Scan. Biological. Energy. Mineral. But there's something over there on the left. I don't know what that is. I can't even go to Uranus. Okay, then something's afoot here. So there's something near Uranus. And yes, we will continue to say Uranus. I don't even know. There's like nothing... How would you... I mean, just looking at this screen, I don't see anything like odd. We can go check out Pluto. not going to be shit on Pluto. It's pretty freaking cold. There is one energy source on Pluto. That might be something. Let's go land on it. Huzzah! What is this? Mayday from surface. We have come under fire from an alien vessel we found hiding on the surface of Pluto. We have returned fire, but our stunner can't penetrate the ship's hull armor. Captain, they killed Kowalski, Fritz, Chin, O'Donnell, Luigi, and all three of the Lieberman triplets. We are initiating emergency launch procedures. End of transmission. <laughs> Attention, big, mean, hostile alien vessel hovering overhead in an obvious attack posture. This is Spothy Captain Fwifo. I know you're going to torture me, so let's just get this over with right now. Coordinates of my homeworld, Spathiwa, are 241.6, 368.7, and the ultra-secret Spather cipher, which is known only by me and several billion other Spathi, is Huffy Muffy Guffy. Sorry about that little mistake with your landing vehicle. I was so startled when it approached my vessel in a threatening manner that... Uh... My automated defense systems fired on him when it got too close. I hope nobody got hurt. Well... I don't know if we, I mean, based on the music, it seems like not some horrible monster. Uh, hi there, friend. We come in peace and mean you no harm. Are you sure? Because your statement is often just a more polite way of saying... Attention, alien vessel, identify yourself and be destroyed. In any event, I am Spothy Captain Fwifo of the Void Ship Star Runner. Placed here in this planetary system as part of the powerful Earth Guard Star Force. Which our masters, the Urquan, established here to make sure the Earthlings don't do anything tricky. What are you doing here on Pluto? About 20 years ago, this region of space was dominated by a loose confederation known as the Alliance of Free Stars. Which was composed of the aliens native to these parts who didn't want to be enslaved. They made a valiant effort against the superior Urquan forces. And it even looked like they might miraculously defeat the combined Urquan Armada. Right up to the point at which the Urquan totally defeated, indeed, annihilated them. So what are you doing here on Pluto? When the Urquan Armada entered this system to subjugate formally the Earthlings, the Urquan presented the humans with the standard slave option. Join the hierarchy as combat thralls and retain some autonomy, including the right to travel through space, 
or become a fallow species and return to pre-atomic savagery on the surface of their homeworld, encased for all time beneath an impenetrable force shield. The humans, the Hunams, chose the latter option, and so were swiftly imprisoned on the surface of Earth. But the Urquan didn't trust them to obey the restrictions, so... They chose a small group of hierarchy combat starships from the Ilrath and Spothy fleets to serve as the so-called Earth Guard and station them at the base, a base on Earth's moon. Tell me what you're doing on Pluto now! Originally, we were stationed on Earth's moon, which made us Spothy a bit uneasy, because with each passing day, we grew more and more worried about the sneaky Earthlings making a surprise attack. Though the Ilrath kept telling us that that was impossible, since the Earthlings had no ships or weapons whatsoever. That made us feel a bit better, but when the Ilrath left, we again grew fearful, and decided to make a strategic redeployment to Mars. Later on, we decided it would be prudent to relocate Jupiter's moon Ganymede, then later Saturn's moon Titan, and finally here to Pluto. Okay. What happened to the Ilrath station here? Ilrath Contingent were supposed to be the toughest ridge crest, uh, most rigid flipper. No. Uh, yeah, the backbone of the Earth Guard force, but they departed the system in mass, not long after the last Urquan dreadnought vanished from this region of space. They claimed to have received a direct order from their gods of evil and darkness, who had grown dissatisfied with the Ilrath's passivity, and wanted them to kill or at least torture someone soon. Personally, I believe they just got bored and went off to have some fun. When do you expect the Ilrath to return? Well, when they were pushing up into hyperspace 18 years ago, we asked them that very question, and I think they said something to the effect of, real soon. <laughs> what is happening at the base on Luna, then? We decided that if the Earthlings figured out we had abandoned the base on Luna, they would be more likely to try something sneaky. So we rigged up some old biodroids to drive around on the lunar surface in boldovers, endlessly pushing around these same piles of dirt. In addition, we connected the base's radio transmitter to the audio portion of Winky's Happy Night, my favorite Melnorm fun rom, hoping that the Earthlings would think we were still there. What happened to the other spothy ships? Over the past years, it became necessary to redeploy strategically some of our Earthguard forces to our homeworld in case of a sudden surprise attack by a vicious, unrelenting alien race which we spothy call the Ultimate Evil. How many crew do you have aboard? Dozens, that is to say scores, and perhaps even hundreds of my brethren stride through the corridors of this specially modified, super-efficient, mass-destruction-oriented starship, which could lay siege to an entire planetary system should we so choose. Fortunately for you, we have decided not to today. Hundreds? Come on. I am undone. You are far too clever for a poor spothy like me, and now I must submit to your superior alien intellect. I guess I am not revealing any truly important secrets if I tell you that each of my species' eluder class void ships typically holds 30 spothy crewmen. Though at present my vessel, the Star Runner, is not up to full com complement due to the needs of my homeworld and their resistance against the ultimate evil. And in fact, my vessel is somewhat understaffed right now, seeing as how I am the only spothy on board, which is a bit frightening as I am sure you can understand. The galaxy teams are threatening monsters. Are you happy here, alone and vulnerable? How true, Captain, how true. In truth, just between us, during the past seven years, I've been quite ill at ease. Yet now I find myself enjoying your company, this witty dialogue, in the presence of your huge, powerful, death-dealing starship, which, being my friend, you would certainly feel compelled to use in order to save me from any hostile life forms who threaten me with death. Who or what is the ultimate evil? As yet, the ultimate evil remains largely unmanifest, and its powers and exact intentions are still a bit obscure since it lurks just outside the range of even the most sensitive long-range detectors, which we feel gives conclusive evidence as to the ultimate evil's nefarious intent. Why are you still here, Captain Fwiffle? Since it was our most powerful and unforgiving masters, the Urquan, who stationed us here, we knew it would be grossly stupid to disobey them completely. But we decided that it would be okay to send just one ship home. We used one of our most ancient and solemn rituals, Pun Tafi, to pick the lucky ship. Then, some months later, we decided that it wouldn't really hurt if we sent one more ship home, and then later we sent another, and then another. Well, you get the idea. Alas, as fate would have it, when the final ritual was performed, I, Fwiffa, was left here alone, for as even the most immature and crustling knows, there must always be one spothy who picks the short tapoon stick. Where are the Urquan now? 
Our masters don't really keep us very well informed about their goings on. So all that we know is that immediately after the subjugation of the last Alliance race, the Yeehot, I think, the Urquan gathered their dreadnoughts and departed Corward, commanding us to obey the slave laws or face their wrath when they return. Do you know anything about other alien races? We know only bits and pieces of what happened to each race. For instance, when defeated, the Yehat joined the hierarchy as combat thralls, while the Cyrene chose to be chose to be slave shielded on a planet in the Bug Squirt star system. No, that's not right. I forgot its name. Anyway, where was I? Oh yes, the Shofixti. They were utterly wiped out in a gigantic blaze of glory. What's this Shofixti blaze of glory? The Shofixti were half-feral, as you know, having been uplifted by the Ahad, just a few decades before the start of the war. Given their habit of detonating those suicidal so-called glory devices in combat, it came as no particular surprise to me when upon the arrival of the Urquan primary task force at their homeworld, the Shofixti caused their sun to explode in a colossal supernova, destroying the entire planetary system and not incidentally dozens of Urquan dreadnoughts. Snork, snork, snork. What about yourself, Wiffle? Me? You mean me, personally? How nice of you to ask. I was born in a poor, green, and crustling, the youngest child of a family of 18,487. My male parents had to work hard to support us, very hard. But each of my brothers and sisters and I tried to help out to make ends meet. The female parent was kind and sweet to all of us. Why, she once even called me by name. She said, Fwiffo, Fwiffo, darling, would you please answer the door? I think someone's there. What a treat, a golden memory. I swiftly matured into a fine example of my species, and with my parents' assistance achieved independence. Specifically, they pried me from the door jam and rolled me into the street. Thus prepared, I set out to make my fortune. I had great dreams in those days, yes, great dreams. I knew that someday I would be vastly rich, wealthy enough to afford a large, well-fortified mansion. Surrounding my mansion would be vast tracts of land, through which I could slide at any time I wished. Of course, one can never be too sure that there aren't monsters hiding just behind the next bush, so I would plant trees to climb at regular, easy-to-reach intervals. And being a spathy of the world, I would know that some monsters climb trees, though often not well, so I would have my servants place in each tree a basket of perfect stones. Not too heavy, not too light, just the right size for throwing at monsters. I was thinking about what color the stones would be painted. Aqua, mauve, or magenta. When a vegetable cart came careening down the street outside my house and knocked me unconscious. When I awoke, I was aboard the void ship Star Runner, heading for Earth. Apparently, I had been out of my head for quite some time after the accident, and with the assistance of some kind strangers, had been relieved of my funds and convinced to join the Navy, where I have been an unpleasantly employed for the last 25 years. I'm sure you'd feel a lot safer if you were with us. Come on, Fwifo, join our fleet. Happy days and jubilation! I discard all prejudice and hesitations and accept and celebrate your offer of protection and your undying commitment to my well-being. I must wax melancholy for just a moment, though, and make sure you understand that any other spotty ships we meet at large in the galaxy are not going to be quite so responsive to your friendly gestures as myself, since they bear more heavily the yoke of Urquan enslavement and are also apt to talk themselves out of allying with a totally unknown alien which I, having been left here alone, cannot do. In addition, you will no doubt wish to reverse engineer my vessel, the Star Runner. While I am sure this will be an interesting and educational experience for your technicians, I must explain that even if you were to duplicate my eluder vessel, you would be unable to use it in combat because you would lack the expertise of native captains. So without further ado, welcome me aboard, Captain. Huh. And now we have his ship as part of our fleet. As you can see on the right. Captain Mag, I'm glad you made it back in one piece. Oh, okay, nothing... Nothing to say about that. Um... Okay, yes, that's that. Hmm. 
one of 30. What does that mean, 130? Oh, I can crew it. Well, yeah, hell yeah. Alright, um, just about done here. Let me just look real quick at a walkthrough. I fucked up. Um. Oh no, okay. Well, sort of. I was supposed to write down the coordinates. I was supposed to actually write down the coordinates that he mentioned of where the Spothy homeworld is. Because that's where we're supposed to go. And I don't know if we'll ever say that again. Let's just go to Alpha Illuminati, though. take most of my fuel to get there. Okay, so now we're on autopilot. Shit. Oh, that, that's apparently okay. Is it? What the fuck is happening? This is weird, wild stuff. Alright, well, I mean, we know that we need to... We're spending practically all our fuel to get there. Which, uh, I imagine will just mean... I mean, we're not gonna... What are the odds we're gonna be able to buy fuel there? And then, uh, we'll basically be stranded and probably just dead. So, I think that essentially what we're doing here is a suicide mission. Yeah, I definitely didn't know that you were supposed to uh, write down the coordinates. Apparently that's different game to game. Although, let me... I, something seems to be closing in on me. I think we're about to get into a fight. Which is... Oh, oh yeah. There it is. Encounter in deep space. Converse. We come in peace. What can you tell me about your species? Remote Pro program to replicate, record data, contact alien species. Priority override, new behavior dictated. Must break target into component compounds. There you have it. So should I send the big ship or Fwifo? I don't know. Let's try Fwifo, just something different. Do I even have a gun? I don't have a gun. What the fuck is happening? Oh, there's my gun. I can't even, 
like see when it's firing out. I don't even know where it's firing out from. Alright, now we send in the big boy, I guess. Alright, yeah, they have a different combat technique than the ill rat. My turning speed is still fucking ass. Alright, we got some good hits. There you go, get some good hits. Oh man, yeah, you need a lot of turning jets to actually use this in battle. Fuck. Draining my crew. It's so annoying. Never died. Never died. Got it. Jesus. Enemy ships destroyed. Yeah? I got 550 RU. And maybe some things? Did we use up fuel during that, or... Should I maybe not go all the way there? Should I go to just Eta? Now what did I hit? Oh, I hit Eta. I mean, how do I... What are the odds, you know? Are we going to assume that... I mean, what? Is every solar system going to have a resupply? Every other solar system? One out of every four? One out of every eight? Yeah, I mean, how can you tell? That's my question. I probably should read the manual for some of these old ass games. Never, there we go. I mean, this just looks like a barren planet. This is planet one. And then we go in and we'll scan it and there'll be nothing. I mean, no. Just search real quick. This guy says... If you want your mothership to be anywhere decent in combat, you need to buy all the turning upgrades. You'll have a very hard time. Uh, first upgrade I always get is the second fuel tank, so I have a hundred fuel of it available. That should be good in the beginning, but when you start to get further out, you'll need another tank. General rules to never leave yourself with less fuel needed to return to Sol when out in another system. Yeah, that's probably... That's probably it. So I think, uh, this would likely result in just, a death or something. Um, so we can end there. I think that's fine. So... How have I never heard of this game? Like, good lord. It's insane! It's insane! I mean, just like... Even just like the dialogue and stuff between, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, the Fwifo. That was excellent. And it's funny. I didn't expect this game to be funny, but apparently they were big fans of the Monkey Island games. I mean, it's really incredible for 1993, 1992, sorry. Crazy good. I mean, that, this is like the, one of the main reasons I wanted to do this whole series is because I knew there was going to be some hidden gems in here that I've never played before. 
but would end up really liking. And yeah, I mean... If I had been, like, 18 or something when this game came out, yeah, I probably would have heard about it, probably would have gotten it, probably would have played it. But it came out when I was two years old. And, you know, unless you have someone that you know that's really into, like... I don't know, PC gaming at the time. It's just... No, and, I, and who knows what age I would have had to have been to actually appreciate it. So it's just hard. It's just crazy I've never heard of it. And it's not a short game. Um, I wonder if it's on how long to beat. <laughs> I would hope so. Uh, Star Control 2. 13 and a half hours for just the main story. I don't know where exactly they're getting that number. This says 16 hours for the main story. 30 hours for the main story plus side stuff. If you want to do, like, everything that actually has content. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah, just as a whole package in 1992 is just like an in-depth, deep sci-fi experience. This is top fucking tier. Tim Kaine credits Star Control 2 with inspiring his open-ended design in both Fallout and Arcanum. Founder of Bioware, Ray Muzica? I never know how to pronounce his name. Also cites it as an inspiration, stating that the Uncharted worlds in Mass Effect comes from imagining what a freely explorable universe would be like inside a very realistic next-gen game. Some have called Star Control 2 a spiritual predecessor to Mass Effect. Yeah, I can see why. Pretty incredible stuff. There's a Star Control 3. And apparently it did review pretty well, like in the 90s and stuff like that. Uh, 9 out of 10, 90%, A minus, 9 out of 10, 86%, 4 stars, 4.5 stars. Um, but it just wasn't as good as Star Control 2. Might still be worth checking out, though. Um, yeah, so... Is Star Control 2 one of the best games of all time? Gosh... I feel a little strange because it's just like, oh, well, man, we finally come across another game that's like, you know, in your sort of genre. And of course you like it. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 does it hold up? Well, okay, let's just ask it. Does it hold up? Yeah, I mean, we're, we've been playing this for an hour and 25 minutes and I kind of want to play more. So, yeah, I would say it holds up. Um, does it have broad appeal? I mean, that's usually what we ask, but then when I get to some games, it's like, does that really matter? Does it have broad appeal? Would I put a kid in front of this? No, but it's not a kid... It's not like Mario or Sonic, you know? It's, it's a deeper experience. I wouldn't put a kid in front of Civilization, either. Um...
So the kid argument isn't really... Would I put, like... Would I recommend it to a friend? Well, hmm, that's hard to say. Do I know anyone that would even want to play something on DOSBox? <laughs> um, well, if they remade this, or no, if they remastered this game, and all they did was make the graphics like better, like higher, higher res and stuff. Um, and they just released it on Steam for 10 bucks. Yeah, I would absolutely recommend it to people. Just because, you know, all the dialogue and all that sort of stuff, um, like the actual ship combat is perfectly good. I mean, that's all here. It's just, you know, some aspects are dated. But the game itself, if you can look past that, or if they somehow miraculously updated all that, yeah, I mean, it seems like the game itself is still a winner. So, sure, I'm going to go ahead and say Star Control 2, one of the best games of all time. A hidden gem at the very, very least. Crazy, I'd never heard of this. Um, and there aren't too many games going forward that I've never heard of. Because uh, now we're starting to get into, like, you know, my era of gaming. There's, there's a bunch of games on here I've heard of but I've never played or really know much about. So, you know, we might find something in here that's a gem, but that... I don't know. This could be the last big gem of this list. It's possible. That I am just blown away by. Um, it's not a role-playing... I mean, this isn't a role-playing game, and it's not really turn-based. It's an adventure game with space combat thrown in there. It's mostly more about the adventure and just, like, going along with the story and things like that. Um... So, yeah, in some ways, it's like, you know, some of those scum games as far as just experiencing the story. Usually, I don't care for that, but I don't know. I really enjoy just, like, the dialogue and, and the setting here. All right, I think this has gone on long enough. Um, I could probably do, like, a whole Let's Play of Star Control 2. We'd have to employ a walkthrough and stuff like that. Um... And maybe I would look into the 3DO version. Actually, they made the 3DO version with some upgrades. And then they ported that to the PC as a game called the Urquan Masters. Which is sort of weird. Um, but I might look into that. That's still being updated? It's an open source thing that's still being updated. And there's an Urquan Masters HD. Well, I guess I'm going to be looking into that. Its last stable release was in January of 2021. So, yeah, it's still being sort of worked on by a community. Uh, Alright, well that's very exciting. I'm going look, gonna to look into that. Well, since I'm sitting right here, let me just look up footage. All right, here's some footage from 2017. Okay. Um. Eh. Hard to say. hard to say on some of this. It definitely has that sort of low budget, like, flash game aesthetic. It's completely lacking, like, any sort of the grittiness that this one has. 
I wouldn't say the graphics here are strictly better at, at, at all. Um, and, like, the actual UI... Yeah, it, I've got strong, like, Flash game vibes from this. It just looks kind of cheap. Maybe the 3DO version, though, is... is alright. Hmm. Hard to say. Anyways. Anyways, yeah. Hidden gem, for sure. Alright. My name is Mang. This has been Mang Plays the Best Games of All Time with Star Control 2. And I'll see you fine folks next time.